Attention. Let's go. Positive. Strong, determined start. No errors, no sudden glitches. They're away efficiently. And Jonathan, look at the difference in rates and styles. Those two different sizes absolutely shows here. We've got the lightweight athlete on the left. He's putting lots and lots of stroke thing. And actually, the lighter athlete is going to get quick, get fast, get going quicker. And then the heavier athlete on the right, who is putting on less strokes, using his strength. And this, you could not get more different in styles here. It's going to be fascinating to see how this works out, because the Slovenian. Lightweight is in front at the moment. No need to panic for Stefan Brunink, who's a spare for the Dutch crew. He's been representing the Netherlands since 2014. Fourth in the single skulls at the Lucerne World Cup. Been involved with the Dutch Olympic squad and their boats coming up later in this afternoon session. The, the men's eight should be fascinated to see what happens there. They are quietly confident. And they'll want to see exactly what happens for their colleague. And this is interesting, isn't it? Because both these crews are absolutely at the top of their game. We have a, a world-class lightweight and a world-class heavyweight. The Dutch programme at the moment, I think, is producing really nice rowing. And it's not just at the top level, it's all the way through, down through the under-23s, the juniors as well. You're right, they've got this really lovely picture of how they move with the boat. And actually, it doesn't matter if you're 17 stone or a lightweight female. What we're seeing is a very similar picture where they're using their legs well, they're working with the boat. And then this is what will come naturally to the lightweight athlete because they don't have the power um, that necessarily a, a heavyweight or 17 stone athlete will have. So so what we've got here is a really um, interesting example of a, a national picture of how we want to row and how we will row versus a lightweight who has got a really clear picture, really efficient, that so he comes through his part of the race. Let's see how it unfolds. It's going to be fascinating just to have a look at the rating, just to see how the Dutchman is coming back at his Slovenian rival. Seems to have picked it up. Well, interestingly there, Hervat just caught a bit of water there and I saw his blade come out and in a single that feels horrible because there's no one else to, to protect you, if you like, and the boat tips. And you can see now he's actually come off his feet and he is really struggling. I don't know if there's a little bit of wash or something or the wind is affecting him. We can certainly see the wash off the umpire's launch, but he won't be affected by that. But he's come away from the booth. That has scared him, but it'll also give him one of those major shots of adrenaline. And after a major shot of adrenaline, you can feel like a superstar and you can really move. Well, we saw this uh, yesterday with uh, another Dutch scholar, Ruben Nav, who... Um was seemingly out in control in his particular heat and then almost caught a crab and that completely threw him and it gave encouragement to the chasing Czech, Vertsek, but in the end the experience and the advantage that uh, the Dutchman had told and he was able, as you say, to that shot of adrenaline and that sudden uh, fear righted and he was able to take control again once more and continue smoothly and victoriously to the finish. Interesting just to see, the angle will become clear soon from the picture, but it would look as if having had that advantage early on, the Slovenian has been gradually reeled in. Yes, we had that error as well, that, that worry for him, and Stefan Brunink from the Netherlands has done his job. Can Hervat continue? Can he hang on here? Because there's still very much a race to be won, but it's how much effort he's expended earlier on. Yeah, and it's interesting. I saw Hervat just look over and there he does it again. He's watching his opposition and you can see this big move by the Dutchman now. I just noticed he's doing more strokes per minute than he was a few minutes, a few uh, just down the course. And that will make a difference. And he has started to lift his boat. These guys are in pretty much match boats. They're made by the same guy. They have the same riggers. They'll be different sizes. So no difference there, but number of strokes a minute, using your strength, pushing it on. I can see the Dutch man is just coming through now and Herbert, all he can do is put a few more strokes in, but it, I don't think it'll make the difference. He has just taken an advantage while we've been watching them coming up 
river and he is now into clear water so the race has changed pretty much in the last 500 meters i'd say and he's now breaking clear and the man who was once a, a very efficient accomplished water polo player apparently then said someone said have a go in the ergo because he was big and tall and strong and then look where he is now possibly was going to the olympics he's the spare at the moment but that is such a crucial position if someone gets ill or something goes wrong then he's ready to step in so this is all part of uh, the dutch plan in fact the uh, coach of the dutch eight was telling me that this has been in the diary the henny regatta has been in the diary since september last year this is a stepping stone all part of their training camp they're out in austria but they've come here specifically because they want to have good solid strong competition and also a bit of fun i think this is it and it's the Olympics, they are just round the corner. You can touch them and taste them. People will be getting on the plane to Rio or their various training camps in the next few days. And sometimes coming away from that and doing this side-by-side -side racing. I just spoke to Mahe Drysdale earlier, and he was talking about he's come here, but the rest of the New Zealand crews have not, because he wants this feel of battle before he goes away for his final training camp, because that's how he's going to have to race if he's going to defend his Olympic title. You know, he's not going to be uh, meeting this Dutchman, but he'll be watching him for the future. Um, what a talent. Um, first Henny Rora guest for him. I think he'll be pretty pleased with his um, debut. It's looking good. And if he's going to measure himself against Mahe Drysdale, then he is doing well. Sixth, isn't it? The sixth Diamond Skulls type he's going for, Mahe Drysdale. Five already. Olympic champion. That's right. Oh, Stuart McKenzie, he yep. holds that record at the moment. And um, we want Mahe to win. Not that I'm saying this right now, just so he can come back to the regatta because he's a great athlete and we want great athletes at the regatta. And this is where you really do start to find out about them. Yes, those who are junior coming through under 23 level, this is another chance to mark out those who are starting to take the eye. This is a crew with great potential. There's a sculler, there's uh, a men's pair, a junior pair who really seem to be catching the eye. Just the technique, the strength, the power, and their ability to cope with pressure. Maybe it's the conditions, maybe it's the opposition, but either way, you can see them developing, and yet it's another notch, as you might say, on the belt. Yeah, I got to Friday, my first time I raced here in the single skull, and I remember being such an overwhelming experience. I could barely breathe on the start. It was so scary. You're there, side by side, your friends, your family, supporters are watching, and I learned so much um, just through this. And then when you go into six-lane racing, you're so protected away from, from the crowds and the noise, from the energy. Um, so you learn more about yourself here, maybe, than ever in an Olympic game. Herbat takes a look over his left shoulder and realises that the game is almost up. That Stefan Brunig, having been behind him at the start, has broken through and is now a length and a half clear and is on his way to cross that finishing line as the winner of this heat. What a way to announce yourself on your first appearance at the Henley Royal Regatta. This is the sound he's been waiting for. And that tells him he's first across the line. And Horvat's disappointment there is seen. Smile from the winner. But the lightweight has been found out. So the tortoise won. <laughs>